And we're live. Yay. Yay. Let's see. Let's see if this works. There we go. Um, oh, my camera kind of sucks. So you don't have your super light set up? Uh, I have, but it's too much. Correctly? Too much light. So oh, I feel like it's pretty high quality today. It's pro stream today. Pro stream. Today is pro stream. Welcome everybody to another live stream. Uh, today is uh, July um, 17. Did you expect it was already this late in July? I don't think so. <laughs> We're already reaching the end of summer. Oh, time goes so Welcome. fast. <laughs> well, what summer? You everybody? Know? What summer? What summer? It's just what so summer? great here. It's depressing. Yeah. So, how is everybody uh, in chat doing? What are you guys up to? feels like for me that it has been a long time since I last streamed. For me, it feels like a long time as well, but I'm not sure when the last time was enjoyed because I think uh, Quinn's up to some cocaine. That's a great way to start the weekend. Um, <laughs> waiting for my keyboard, of course. <laughs> um, wait, what are you saying? Oh, yeah. So I think last weekend, it was, uh, or, or two weeks ago, it was Kevin and... Calder. Uh, I think it was the week before. I think we had Wooda before that, right? Uh, really? Yeah, I think, no, no. It, it, yeah, that's true. Because I think we were supposed to stream one week after Wood Up, and then we were like, okay, we <laughs> too just much. did the Wood Up, so we, uh, yeah, no, it's a bit too much. And then we changed it. So, um, but now we're back on uh, back on normal schedule. It kind of reminds me like how long have we been keeping up the schedule already? For years. This live stream. I, I think, think we've been doing it for a very long time. I think for already three years, like every, well, we sometimes skipped it. Well, maybe we skipped it once or twice, but we've been very consistent at least. We've been very consistent. Too. Yeah. But you know, when I uh, talk with my friends about it sometimes, they're like, yeah, I, I saw that you guys were doing a live stream, so I tuned in. And then they were like, yeah, but you only talk about keyboards. I was like, well, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, not that interested. No, we should game more also doing the streams here. I think so, yeah. I, I think with the live stream, well, how, how it is set up now, it's just like, oh, we go. Uh, hey, got stream subscribed. Yay. Four months stream. That's sick. Thank you. Sick, sick. Hey, notifications work. It's it's weird. Yeah, of course. Pro stream, pro stream, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is pro stream. Notification, you guys. Uh, what are you saying? Oh yeah, but but now how the live stream is set up is more like oh we just have like a chill Friday afternoon talking session, and uh, we don't need to set up too much, right? Like uh, five minutes before you call me and it's like okay, let's uh, set up some topics and we go live and uh, and we just chat out for a bit. That's true. And I, I think that's also why we, that is the whole reason we've been doing it for so long in the first place, because the setup time is very minimal and it's pretty chill to do. And I also, and, uh, uh, I also like the live streams. Let's say we have a new idea or we want to announce something or uh, need some feedback, you know, it's really uh, yeah. nice to get some direct conversation. Uh, that's uh, true. Yeah. Because sure, we make announcements and then we see the chat on Discord, you know, and uh, sometimes yeah. difficult to keep up or reply to everyone but yeah. with the chat with with the live stream you're sort of more focused on the whole thing and yeah uh, i found something interesting for when the q a starts you want to see yes yeah that's very true that's a good, good point okay so Jeroen zoned out i mean that was the pro I stream think, as far. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, especially for this scoreboard. See, Jeroen's quality totally bumped now. <laughs> this, this was his <laughs> limit for today. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. This was My it. My data uses for today is over. Okay, I'll only, switch yeah. to. Uh, okay. I'll switch to mobile. See if that uh, that'll be better. I don't think emote mobile emote only chat is like good. It can be a very creative chat though. <laughs> mm. 
so uh, today we uh, uh, first have some minor announcements, uh, talk a little bit about the remap, uh, uh, wrist rest, and then we delve to a bigger topic, the lag condition. Um, yep. I think uh, we have some cool things to share, like some inside information on uh, mm. uh, where we're at now and what we're working on and the final steps working towards the uh, trial production. We're going to talk a little yep. bit about packaging, design, PCB, software, firmware. Uh, so it's going to be a very... Uh, very interesting one. Uh, yeah, I think so. It's always with the two of us, right? Always the coolest topics. We always we always have the best live streams. Always. Yeah. Every time when uh, when I look back, it's like always when uh, when you see you and me, it's like whoa, whoa. these are the best. These are the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let's okay. let's move on. Let's move on. Then. <laughs> So, uh, um, okay, first of all, uh, yesterday we received the whole big batch here in Europe of the full size wrist rest, the black ones. So they're now oh, back yeah. in stock. So if you really want one, you can now order it and you'll have it uh, pretty soonish. So that's yeah, very nice. So, uh, yeah, so with the wrist rest, like uh, ever since the um, uh, bad C-Tech, uh, it's bad C-Tech, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bad C-Tech. Seed, bad seed tag. Ever since he made the video, like we've seen like uh, a lot of people interested in the wrist rest. And uh, frankly, we're quite behind with the uh, production in general. Meaning uh, we made like a certain estimation at the start, like how much we were thinking we would sell. And uh, turns out we're selling more than we thought, which is of course very good. But then it's like, oh shit, uh, TKL is sold out uh, in the US, I think in the EU now as well. And we started the production, uh, uh, at least we started like the production preparation one month ago and now it's finished. Yeah. But uh, it takes a while to go from like, oh shit, we need to order more to actually having them available in the store, which takes about three to four months or so, including a production I th thing. I think at least three months. I mean, the, the, the pretty fast with production, uh, even though it takes a month, but you know, the, the, the preparation before production is very minimal and it can go really fast that's really neat um yeah that's true but yeah so now the 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 10 keyless wrist rests are also all being produced but uh it's impossible for us to send them over the air now during these corona times uh, it's way too expensive and the weight of these wrist rests is just too much and uh you know uh, we're just gonna lose money on it so it needs to go over the slow boat uh, yeah, yeah. Of, uh, so that can take up to six weeks uh, so I think since last week we accepted uh, back orders again for the 10 keyless version. Um, yep. And we estimated that we can deliver them somewhere early September. We probably have them a little bit sooner, but uh, keeping an eye on early September, it's more reasonable, right? Because <laughs> we have dates, yeah. it's always horrible. So uh, <laughs> yep. better uh, make the margin wide. Yeah, uh, yeah. trains are cool too. Trains are definitely cool too. Uh, it's just that we had, we tried to train once now with, um, it was like with the first shipment of the Wooten 2. Mm -hmm. And the train itself was good, but then getting from the train to uh, here in Holland was a big mess. Uh, I, I remember there was, uh, it was first like stuck in uh, Hamburg or something like that. And then later was stuck in Rotterdam or so. So the train itself was good, but then for some reason the company really screwed up uh in the last uh in the last mile let's say yeah. and at least like boat uh, yes it's slower like the transit time is slower than train it's just that the process is a lot more smooth and that makes the overall time the same and that is uh and it's also now more convenient right so now with the train uh the train needs to go through all these countries with the corona going on that's also not convenient so doing no, it by boat right. it's just like a direct line to the netherlands that's uh or to yeah, the us yeah. uh, and that's just uh, a yeah. way uh Wait to balance and say the arrival. Yeah, I mean, of course, this, so this, this train we're talking about is the train that, that goes from like the Northwest China to Germany directly. So I don't think like Deutsche Bahn does anything because I think what they will do is they, they unload the train uh, at, the, let's say, the train dock and then the last mile they do a truck. At least that's what I, uh, that's what I assume. Or that, uh, that's what I think at least happened last time. Yeah. Hey, I'm not just seeing Vinti else is in Stockholm. I'm going to Sweden as well uh, in a month or so. Is it a month? Yeah, it's, it's in a month. 
Oh, the master drills. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're going to Sweden. Yeah, but I'm going <laughs> I, to go to Stock. Yeah, go to where Stockholm is like pretty far from each other, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's like two, three hours drive. Yeah. Who knows? Mm. Okay, so the, the the next little announcement, but probably everybody knows, we launched a remap update last week. Yes. That was pretty cool. Was it last week, Monday, or two weeks ago? Don't remember. Maybe it was two weeks ago already. Was it? No, it was. I think it was last week. Oh, yeah. Think. I want to say nice one. Seven, seventh of July. Yeah, that's uh, last week. Last week. Yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, thing. remote update. Uh, remote update was pretty sick. A um, lot of response from it. Uh, yeah, all, all, a lot of people uh, using it, especially for like these small uh, key changes. I actually, uh, I, I plugged in. I used it myself for. Um, I got like. Um, or I need the keyboard for my new like uh, pro uh, setup with my new screen and everything. So uh, I plugged in my Wooting one, and since I was a MacBook, I used the remap update to switch the switch the Alt and the Windows key. And, uh, and I'm like, wow, that made me so happy that it was uh, it was just uh, useful for me also as well right away. Just from like these small things, like oh yeah, I also play around with the function keys. I still need to do a little bit, but just these like oh, I don't really use this key, and I want to. Put it somewhere else. That's uh, that's just perfect. So uh, a roadblock I hit with the remap. It was uh, uh, kind of stupid, but way too funny. So you was at my office like three weeks ago already. Oh yeah. Where we made the video, uh, the uh, the the launch video. Uh, uh, you had like like a nice conversation here, and then I added it to a screen recording. So first in uh, doing the first take or whatever, and the whole story. There was like a joke, like hey, you can even play Russian roulette and bind the power button somewhere on your keyboard and then, you know, play Russian roulette with your keyboard. And I uh, recorded it and then I accidentally pressed the key so my PC turned off. And the horrible thing was the key where the power button was, was the same key as the first character of my password. <laughs> <laughs> so each time I tried to look at it, it happened like two times, my PC just shut down uh, immediately. <laughs> And there was nothing I could do. The only thing I could do was like, okay, plug in another keyboard and uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. Yeah. yeah, this 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 power button binding is so stupid because there was also I also saw this guy on Discord and he's like, yeah, I mapped the the power button function key, but for some reason I thought what it would do is open up the power menu in uh, in Windows to choose like if you want to shut down or restart, <laughs> and then his computer shut down right away. It's boom. Yeah. Shut down right away, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no warning. It's just like it goes off right away. Yeah, too bad sandwich bread. Uh... Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a power. Great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I think. Okay, let's see. Uh, this, this, I think a cool one uh, for the feature chat. Yeah. You can see if it works. Does it work? Yes. Oh, cool image here. Will we, will remap be okay. able to do more than just keys? For example, open URLs and start programs. Uh, at this point, we don't have anything in the works for that. But what you could use is uh, auto hotkey for that, right? You could set up these yep. macros uh, for opening specific programs or URLs. And you can just bind them to the F13 up to the F24 key. Add that to your keyboard or your function layer or wherever you oh, want. Hello. hello. And that's how you can, uh, uh, you know, make cool macros or cool stuff. And for now, we would recommend uh, use auto hotkey for this in combination with the remap utility. And maybe in the future we will add something uh, uh, in utility that can uh, support opening URLs or start programs. Because starting programs is always has been a ambition for us uh, to yes. have it somewhere in utility with variable profiles or how would you uh, variable pro yep. is that the name? name variable profiles interactive profiles yes like a profile that well it's a profiles based on the based on the application you're okay. running oh. yeah that's uh, that's an idea we really like and what we think is really uh, uh, can add something to the whole analog or utility experience. Uh, and even let's say we have like a big database of games yeah. that it automatically picks out a profile specifically for that game or that program. Yeah, that would be pretty sick. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned it because somebody just posted uh, uh, a future request on the utility issue. So oh. if you want, you can uh, upload. If you have a GitHub account, you can... Uh, 
add like a thumbs up to this uh, to this post and then uh, give it some more uh, give it some more attention. How do I look for? Uh, yeah, you can uh, on the top right. You can uh, add a reaction. Oh, I can star it or is star the correct thing? No, I don't know. <laughs> post like how Ryan uh, Bloody Black commented three uh, days ago. There's like an emote uh, button. Pick your reaction. Plus one. Plus one. Sick. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna plus one that one. Um, when can we add the Corsair Nexus to our booting? What's Corsair Nexus? Uh, oh, it's a, it's the little new device uh, with the uh, the touch screen thing, right? Is that the new uh, touch screen device? Is it? I think it is, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. It's yeah, but uh, it's interesting. But then when I saw it, I'm like, well, so first, it, it's to, it, to me, it feels like a, a worse uh, touch bar, like MacBook touch bar. And the thing is, I have the touch bar. I don't use it at all. Uh, I would just rather have the normal buttons back. And then this thing is like, well, you just have a separate thing that is also useless. <laughs> that is also useless. And also, um, so, so that's one. But two is that they kind of market it as this IQ software device, which is like, oh, you have a, a $99 device to to interact with your software. It's a, I don't know. It, it sounds like a, it doesn't sound like a good deal to me. I don't. Totally agree because I still think it can be pretty, uh, pretty cool what you can do with it. Uh, it's like a nice middle ground. Normally, what you would say is set up with software or go through. You can now do with a touch of the button pretty quick or have a uh, little screen for your game. Uh, I don't know. And uh, back in the day, I really liked the little screen with the, the little screen of the G15 on my keyboard, even though it was like the biggest game. That ever. is true. But now it's even interactive, right? So you can use it as a touch screen. That's even better than that was. And uh, I think it's cool if it can, if, if it, let's say you want to, you know, change the color of your whole setup because you have everything from the IQ, the, the case, the fans, the keyboard, the LED strips, the Philips light, whatever. And, you know, change your room to red or blue or some color wave or mm. do some minor adjustments for your headphones. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But what what I really do like is that it can attach to their keyboard. Yeah, yeah that's smart. Yeah. I'm mind blown that they, ever, that they already thought about this. That's what I uh, that's what I feel like. It's like because I think the coolest thing ever is is when you have like a let's say you have a certain device, and then all of a sudden you can you can either have this thing on it or buy it, and it has like this perfect fit, and it's like whoa! I can obviously do something completely new with it. Yeah, it's a great. Uh... Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, of not, not a big fan. I mean, uh, I, uh, I'm not a big fan. I, I think it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's a it's a cool device. It, it's a niche device, and uh, if I had like all these cool things from Corsair and uh, wanted to check my temperatures and everything, I I, I would definitely buy it. Too. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, yeah. But I just kind of wonder, like, uh, how. How oh, uh, is it? Is it a general test bar device or is it an IQ or whatever they call it? IQ um, Corsair IQ device because it, it seems more like a Corsair IQ device. And then then my question is, okay, how okay, how useful is their software actually? Yeah, it's basically worst three. Like that's also how you can look at it. But if you, yeah, <laughs> depends what you use it for, right? I mean, checking your temperatures, for example, I have a. A, a gaming friend of mine has like this crazy setup with three screens. It's like. You know, when he games, uh, he has always like these visuals on the screen somewhere with all his temperatures and RAM modules and whatever. And I think it's cool if you can also have it on your keyboard, right? So you can glance at it. Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. But then does it need to be everything Corsair for it to, uh, to work? I don't know. Okay. Now a serious question. So last time I asked what happens to Flatex switches, Eric informed me that they will simply pop, disappear into thin air upon reaching 100 million clicks precisely. And what's now if the lack of switch will suffer from the same cruel fate? Um, well, definitely. <laughs> this, these will explode. 
the, <laughs> the max, once it spin out, once it uh, makes a hundred million rotations, it will explode. And because it's magnetic, it will create a little vortex. So it, instead of it explodes and then it implodes and then the switch disappears. And it's yeah. like a little black hole. Yeah. It just disappears into. It. Yeah, <laughs> we we tried everything to avoid it, but you know it's simply not possible. Right? Yeah, and it was pretty expensive to test because our testing machines kept disappearing into the black hole. So that was a uh, that was tough. <laughs> no, I think uh, the 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 like a switch are also created for 100 million clicks, and uh, yeah, well, um, you know what happens with it. I don't even think you'll reach 100 million clicks with a keyboard. Yeah, that's uh, too ambitious. Yeah. Uh, last thing about the, 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 the Corsair IQ, because Ansa says IQ is terrible. And that's what I thought is that their software doesn't really have a good reputation. And then you basically have a device that can interact with, with software that doesn't have a good reputation. That's not very compelling. But maybe some people, a lot of people like, I, I've never used it before, so I can't really say much about it. It's, uh... I, uh, I had a really cool experience with SteelSeries. So I have these, uh, I have the SteelSeries mouse to rival whatever at home. Uh... And uh, a while back, I wanted to uh, play a game on my MacBook, so I plugged in the mouse, and uh, uh, the mouse really worked like crap on the MacBook for some reason, you know, because some mouses, mice just they, they just work crap on MacBooks. Uh. Mm, and yeah. uh, I downloaded the, the software, which was horrible to use, but there was like a firmware update, and then I could, you know, set my DPI and everything, and then the mouse worked like pss, silky smooth, and it was like perfect for the Mac. But as soon as I turned off the software, it was like oh gone <laughs> mouse is crap again and it's kind of weird that you need to have the software open for your mouse to work properly on a macbook and that's weird yeah because i would assume it would save everything on the mouse itself but apparently yeah. it doesn't i don't know it's like mice mice don't always like sucks because of this terrible acceleration curve yeah i i, I never noticed it with my with my mouse um so what is the uh, what is the bad feeling about it? Uh, like what happens? Well, it's uh, I think for Mac, like what, what you mentioned, it's the mouse acceleration, but it's also because of the retina resolution. And I don't think many. It's just not optimized for third-party mice, because you can imagine if you buy uh, because the trackpad works excellent, right? And the Magic Mouse yeah. works like like a charm, but any other things like apps that like oh, pfft, get away. Uh, <laughs> mm. Only want real stuff. Uh, but yeah, so so I was quite surprised that the software could sort of fix it, but as soon as I turned it off, it was like that. So that mm. was kind of bummer, but still uh, interesting that it worked. Yeah. Oh, super slow to start, move a little faster on the other side of the screen. Yeah, Logitech mice work well on my Mac OS. Uh, that's what I figured because I, I, I'm using a Logitech uh, mm. G304, and I really like it. I, I don't notice, notice any issues on the uh, Mac. I think it's pretty good. But... Yeah, it, from a steel series, it also feels like that it's sometimes skipping positions and it sort of hacks towards one place and you don't have like that precise control over it. Oh, oh okay, that really sucks. No, I, I, I don't notice that at all. Maybe maybe it's what God says that the uh, Logitech mice are just working well on the Mac. Should have bought a Logitech mouse then. Yeah, Logitech mice are very good. Yeah, the only thing I, the only thing I have is uh, I um, I have this uh, USB dongle for four USB ports, and I also plug in the mouse receiver there. And so sometimes if I have like more multiple devices on those ports, especially like more active devices, then uh, then it will just like uh, skip frames sometimes, hmm. skip mouse frames. Uh, just a stupid dongle crap. That's uh... because of Bluetooth, you think? Oh, it's oh, the dongle which is crappy. Oh my god. Oh, this, this is what God says uh, about uh, using a different scroll direction. <laughs> I just keep having to change the setting. I think you can fix it with like a, with like a separate app or something. Yeah, I don't want to download the Logitech software. But I guess uh, I should check it out sometime. Okay. Mm. Uh, talk about. So let's focus on the real topic and let's try to make a stream mark an hour. Sorry, Daryl. Sorry, oh. sorry. Uh, let her update. Here we go. Um, okay, so let's talk about the uh, lecture edition. Where are you? Wait, oh, I, I oh. still wanted to talk something about. The... Okay, okay, never mind. Oh, no, 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 let's no. talk about lecture. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, just move on. 
Let's move on. Huh? That's life. Uh, yeah, lekker dit shit. That's life. <laughs> lekker dit shit. What do you... Uh, uh, so first, it's very nice and it's not comforting. Well, it's, it's a little stressful, but it's very nice that things are moving pretty fast now. Hmm. Um, uh, we, I think before, no, let's say like, especially like COVID period, March, uh, April, like things are just moving slow and there was just like some things that need to be prepared and moved. And, uh, and we were also like, uh, still like in the middle of the factory transition and that kind of stuff. But now it's like, uh, whoa, it's, uh, it's really accelerating because, um, so now we're doing the final taxes before like our first tri trial production and every day it's like, okay, what about this? What about this? What about this? And I'll f figuring out all these, uh, details, um, all these like final, uh, let's say final, uh, steps before doing a uh, production, because there are a lot of things to prepare for, for mm. production, but we're actually doing all of them now. And, uh, so it's, uh, it's quite a lot to, uh, to, uh, take care of, but then it's moving <laughs> and it's, it's like, it, it, there's a clear, there's a very clear path now to the production. Yeah. It's very satisfying to take off certain things and it's like, okay, this is done. What's next? What's next? Just putting, you know, the, the dots and stripes and the T's and I's, uh, how do you say it? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the only thing is that, especially for Kevin, so yeah. Kevin, okay, so now Jeroen is like he's, out again. He's kind of, um, but Kevin is now, uh, he's now the sort of the central point of everything. And uh, for some reason, he sort of rolled into the role of project manager of the whole LEC edition. So uh, he's like having contact with the factory, with the suppliers everywhere and arranging stuff, making sure everybody does what they need to do. And I don't think Kevin even likes doing it, but he's pretty good at it. <laughs> He's, he's very good at it. He's very good at he's it. He's doing it. Yeah. But he has this, he has this sort of list. Uh, he has this like 15, uh, bullet point list that he keeps, or this, uh, that he just keeps updating with, uh, with the next step. And, uh, and it's like, okay, what about the cable, the serial number sticker, the rubber feet, all that kind of stuff, like get that all into place. Um, but he's doing a, he's doing a pretty good job at it. Are I frozen yeah. again or is no, just, no, no, uh... no, 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 no. Okay. 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 I just wanted to check. I was just agreeing. Kevin is doing a very good job. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. And even the, the, so if you look at the, the, the emotes we have for the subscript for the Twitch subs, that is like a supplier, Kevin, a supplier punisher. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Six... So it's called Kevin Teaser, but that originally, uh, so he titled it as uh, like supplier punisher. Like making sure all the suppliers are uh, functioning correctly. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. Uh, so, but so, let's uh, uh, let's get into some uh, uh, some details because yes. you have been working on the whole PCB design the last uh, couple of weeks, finishing it all. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to the PCB design, we we thought we were done, basically, um, but then. Um, our new factory has, let's say, better electrical engineering. Uh, I would just say, I would just say better electrical engineering. And they're a lot more focused on, um, how to say, yeah, just, just a better PCB uh, design in general, like higher, higher requirements. Uh, and what that means is, uh, and mostly aimed at, um, ease of manufacturing. Uh, making sure like the, we have the right components and also a big part is, uh, is the interference testing, like EMI uh, testing. So making sure that our keyboard doesn't, uh, doesn't radiate too much to disturb other devices. Uh, and, um, and also like, uh, ex uh does get influenced too much by external radiation. So the whole like EMI, FCC, whatever, I don't really know what the overarching term is, but, uh, noise. Compliance. Electro, electro with edit compliance. I guess that's, uh, yeah. So, uh, that, that has been like, uh, pretty much my life, my life the past two weeks. So every morning I wake up and, uh, there's like a, a fresh new email from, uh, 
from the engineer like hey uh i also found uh, this thing uh, you need to fix and then uh, it's me uh, opening my uh opening up my pcb uh, design software again and uh and making sure all the lines are correct and uh it's um I, I feel like now we're like close to done done but jesus it was a lot of work that's uh that was uh yeah annoying and yeah. The, and the thing with these with this well not annoying it was uh just uh just a lot to do surprising uh, a lot more than i thought but it's also nice right that it's almost finished and it it, it makes the product even better making these it makes it a lot better yeah. yeah because if you look at the if you look at the design we have now and the lay so the, specifically the pcb layout we have now so we have like uh so the the EMC uh, the compliance is a lot better. Uh, we have uh, protection against like uh, uh, inverse currents when you uh, first plug in your keyboard. So when you plug in your keyboard, there can be this sort of like um, current peak because like some uh, things need to charge and everything. So and uh, they also suggest <coughs> have like some protection circuit there. Um, better, better like a noise. Uh, uh, isolation ins better noise protection for for our sensors so that we can have like uh, better analog values um some more like technical stuff like uh on the pcb there are always this uh this sort of uh, overlay let's say which is just this printing on it with like uh, numbers for all the components and uh and making sure all that is correct for like uh, easier manufacturing so it's a uh, yeah see is the best stream that's, that's the what best we stream. Yeah, it is no doubt yeah. no doubt uh so anyway so all these things all these changes they they really add up and uh i, I think what we have now is is miles better than what we had before so so i'm very very happy with the result that's uh, that's for sure and uh, along the line also um the let's say the engineering team from the new factory they are very uh, pleasant to work with because uh normally well, normally when you work with chinese engineering it's it's a little hard to communicate and there's also this sort of like um you don't you don't, you don't get, really get like the right right feedback that you can also learn something from like it's either like very instructional like oh do this do this do this uh or they just do it themselves and they never really tell you what they change <laughs> that has been my experience until so far but uh with this team they uh, they uh send videos of uh, like the testing they do and they give like background information on, on, on why this is better and uh so there was this one issue they uh brought up that it's pretty interesting. So uh, in, inside our keyboard, there's like this little cable that connects the PCB to the USB port. It's like this um, this internal, let's call it the internal USB cable. And what they found out is that the copper inside the internal USB cable can interfere with uh, with your hall sensor voltage, let's say, or your hall sensor result. And uh, they showed like videos, like how they tested this, and uh, they had like a lot of ideas how to prevent this. And uh, we ended up with like a pretty nice solution to uh, to prevent uh, to prevent it from uh, from influencing like any uh, any signal. And uh, yeah, it's great because uh, these kind of things, like either they, um, if you don't have somebody like actively uh, working with you, with uh, also with a lot of experience, you might find you you might uh, discover them uh, once you're already too late. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's been really good to um, to really work on uh, yeah getting us all uh, getting us all right now yeah and a lot and so the last thing I want to share about the PCB stuff is that uh, PCB software I don't know what they do but it really sucks it uh, they uh, it, it's just designed by engineers that's what it feels like <laughs> classic it's like designed by people like me uh, which is fine because it's also used by people like me. But then I would appreciate a bit more if people like Eric like, uh, would just like take a look. Uh, if they had like people like Eric on their team sometimes, to take a look at uh, uh, to untangle the big fucking mess uh, that is uh, PCB design software. Yeah, yeah, it's, because uh, I I think that's the issue with all the specialized software, right? I mean, there aren't that many yeah. users that use it, or like a very specific group, and they're sort of used to this crap. And uh, yeah, exactly. Even though it's nice to put, you know, a UXer on there and you know fix the whole workflow for everybody, it's probably not worth the whole investment for this kind of software because engineers, I are, so, yeah. engineers are tough, you know, they they don't care. 
<laughs> no, and also like if you change something for an engineer, they're like, oh, uh, what happens? And I get this 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 uh, sh- this uh, short circuit in their brain. At least that's what I get. The short circuit. Like, oh, chains, chains. Uh, I have to get used to it. It doesn't work. Uh, don't want any chains. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and one of those choices, for example, is that in this PCB design, you have like uh, you have two layers: your top and your bottom layer. And those are the most important things you'll focus on constantly because you'll draw some lines on the on the top layer, and then you draw some lines on the bottom layer. And what they do is they make the top layer red and the bottom layer blue, but it's very bright. And I assume they choose it one time because of like, it has a high contrast, but then the problem is, it's when you look at it for a few hours and then later you lie in bed and you close your eyes and you can still see red and blue everywhere. Like it's like, uh, uh, it's just imprinted in your eyes because the color is so strong. And I don't really understand why they don't just pick more colors that are more like softer on your eyes. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's one of those things. Too bad, percentage bad. Uh, what Quinn says, but it seems nice that you would, that you have like an actual partner, not just some random factory who just says yes, it's fine. I still don't think the the the, the factory we're working now with is an actual partner, but they are very uh, professional and proactive with issues, and that is something unique for China, I guess. At least the, all the factories we have worked with in the past, just yeah, proactive. Uh, yeah. Yeah, proactive. That is uh, that is pretty unique. Yeah, it's also why we choose them because um, last year Calder uh, made like a big round of uh, all kind of like different manufacturing partners, and, and the main reason we choose this one is that with this one Calder really felt in the conversations that they were like thinking along with him to creatively solve issues, yeah. and that was just something that was missing a lot from from our conversations with other factories, where they were either like. Um, you don't really have the right people and they and they don't really know what they're talking about uh or they're just too focused on um just getting a product going uh, as fast as possible and uh, they'll tell you yeah we can do it cheaper than the other ones but then for us we we want a a good good relationship and and, and a lot of feedback and and make good products and uh, we also need that we also need the help of the factory because uh, we can't do everything ourselves no uh, so with this one, uh, it seems like a pretty good fit. Yeah, of course, like uh, we still have a lot, uh, a lot of work to do with them, but till so far, it's been very pleasant. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, so uh, uh, BCB uh, finished, almost finished, close to finishing. Uh, we're almost really ready for truck yeah. production that's upcoming, which is really, uh, which I'm really excited for because that means. Once the trial production is finished, we all get like like finishing keyboards. Uh, we can test the, the play around with them. But that's something I've been waiting for for a long time. Uh, just actually using it instead of yeah. you know feeling parts of it, using part of it as sort of a hacked version of the final product, but yeah. actually a final product. It always made me excited. Also doing the trial production of the Wooting One and uh, Wooting Two. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because uh, especially like once that trial production is, is is over or once that is like running successfully, then it's pretty much just a, a linear line to mass production. And then we can perfectly, then we can like uh, make a, a, let's say a near perfect estimation of, uh, of when it's done and when it ships. Yeah. It's like the defining uh, the uh, the moment. And I, yeah, everyone has been thinking that. That's definitely true. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So... It's kind of unfair for me to say like, hey, uh, I'm really waiting for it. I cannot wait to try it out. And uh, sure, I've tried it probably more than uh, and, it, and if you guys, you guys actually paid for it and are also waiting for it excitingly. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's 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 also very difficult for me to uh, see how you guys actually feel about it. But I'm just gonna be very bold here, right? Because I think I even deserve it more. <laughs> because you know, <laughs> no, no, wait, 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 wait. We've been working on this for over a year, right? Uh, you almost... deserve this a lot. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Yeah, all these people like literally wait, paying wait, you money wait, to wait, make wait, it. Wait, 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 and wait, you're wait. sitting there like, yeah, but I literally deserve this more than you guys. Let me... <laughs> I'm using bad words, but let me explain, right? Uh, we've been working on this for every day. So for us, the excitement is really there and... Uh, I'm being confronted with a lacquer keyboard every day, you know, because especially the last past months, every day it's always 
Lekker dit, dit, lekker dit, dat, lekker dit, lekker bla, lekker da, 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 da. En, yeah, I mean, is, uh, you, guys only get, you guys only get a reminder every two weeks when the stream is live. Oh yeah, I was waiting for the lekker dit shit. Uh, oh, let's, uh, let's nag these guys. Uh. <laughs> you guys can sleep at night. I'm just only dreaming about the lekker dit shit because... Uh. <laughs> That's why I deserve it more. No, I don't deserve it more, but I think I'm, I'm probably more excited for this than any of you guys. That's that. That's a thing I should better place it. You guys, <laughs> you guys, you guys deserve it even more. To be honest, because you actually paid for it. Uh, yeah. Exactly. We 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 only spend time in it, so uh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but it's a good take. <laughs> take your baby, yeah. It's like it's like your baby, and then you sell it off to everybody else. Yeah. It, it's also very painful. So uh, totally random fact. So uh, last time I was uh, I was at Jeroen, we went through some returned keyboards and some RMA products, and uh, you know we uh, test them, see if they are still uh, working, whatever. But some people they have an issue with the keyboard. Uh, uh, let's say a key was broken or whatever, some key doesn't work anymore. And then they send it back and we say like, hey, we can look at it and maybe solder something back on a PCB or uh, uh, put in a new PCB. And some people have the guts to give back such a disgusting keyboard with like hair, crap, food, mold, mold yeah. inside the PCB. It's the yeah. second time this happened. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if your PCB is molded, of course your PCB is broken. And that's probably outside of the whole warranty scope. But I would be... If I would send send something back to the factory or to a manufacturer now, I would at least try to clean my product so it looks like I I've taken care of it. And you just cannot, you know, plop it in a box and have this disgusting, sticky thing. And that that that, that pains my heart, you know, you buy a product that's pretty expensive, uh, over hundred euro, and then I don't know, you <laughs> mold grows inside it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> yeah, but it's also like it's also not like uh let's say you uh, sometimes you open up the inside of your pc case and it's like oh shit there's a lot of crap in there no it's like you you look at this every day so you are like um i don't know i don't know why you why you don't like sometimes at least get the feeling like hey uh, maybe i should get the uh, give it a blow sometime <laughs> you just you just blow up the crap that that's the minimum you can do uh, yeah. Okay, but back to the point, right? Everybody deserves a lacquer equally. Everybody. Um, yeah, everybody's equal. Everybody's equal here. Uh, exactly. Uh, okay, um, so uh, more about the uh, future and arrival of the lacquer edition, right? Because we still need to make some uh, uh, software improvements to Utility and adding some new features for the lacquer edition. Uh, one of them will be a uh, rapid trigger which I think is like a sick killer function. And yeah. uh, another added bonus is there's so much memory on the Wooty 2 Lack Edition. It's yeah. so yeah, it's much. insane. It's for a keyboard, it's pretty insane. Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, we can do so much cool stuff with it and have it all inside storage on the keyboard. Uh, yeah. Like a single key uh, actuation point where you can adjust maybe a key of a, a an activation point per key uh, have even more uh, sick RGB effects uh, all stored inside your uh, keyboard without external software running it. Uh, and uh, yeah, Jeroen, what's up with that? <laughs> yeah, so now we uh, we really started working on the on the like a firmware part. Uh, so until so far, we've mostly done like uh, let's say just setting up everything. Meaning, like uh, making sure we can uh, run the same uh, code for like our flight tech keyboards and like keyboards and uh, instead of everything. And, and right now we're thinking a lot about like, okay, we have this uh, we have this flash memory chip. So first of all, like how how are we going to um, to make sure that uh, we can uh, we can read and write and uh, and save uh, save things uh, let's say dynamically. Uh, because the problem we had before was uh, we were limited by size, of course, but we are also pretty limited by, um, let's just call it memory control or memory setup. And what I mean by that is that if we wanted to change like how big RGB profile is, 
or a, a classic example is the indicator colors where it's like okay why can i change the capsule color and the uh, fn lock color but not my num lock color and and the reason is is <laughs> and, and the reason is that the the how we control the memory is very hard to change and if we want to add something in between that is I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's uh, very difficult to, to do without at least some keywords breaking in the well. So now that we have like a, a fresh a fresh start, let's say we're gonna ensure that that is no longer an issue. So that is also a big uh, so so yes, it's also so it is like a big uh, size increase. So we have like theoretically like infinite uh, infinite profiles, but then also because the the size is bigger and we also have like a clean memory state to start with, we can also make it a lot more dynamic. And that is also a huge advantage. So that is uh, something we're going to focus on very, very soon. So for this live stream, we want to ask Twitch chat, what do you want? What do you want to use extra memory for? Web server. <laughs> Web server. <laughs> Embedded Python. Oh my God, nerds. Embedded Python. Nerds, what cool things. It's not even related to having more memory. <laughs> It's like, hey, we want analog curves per key, you know? That's that's a cool yeah, idea. Yeah, that kind of stuff. That's what we want to hear. Per key activation, yes. Unlimited amount of DPS steps, yes. That's a good one. I think uh, another thing I'm also very excited about, and this is like, uh, uh, I, 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 I probably one of the only people in the world that is excited about this one, is that if we have a lot of memory, what we could do oh, is yeah. Two years. when <laughs> when you do a when you do a firmware update. What we could do is uh, your keyboard will just still be running, and we already secretly like uh, send over the the firmware update to your to the flash memory chip. And then when you press the update button, your keyboard will only need to restart, and then it will quickly load the firmware locally, the new firmware locally. And then you just restart the keyboard, and it will have restarted with the fresh firmware with the new firmware. So, because right now we're just wait, we are waiting on the USB transfer, and with uh, if we have the flash memory on the keyboard, we can uh, we can have like instant instant updates, and already prepare everything in the background, and then there's only one reboot required, and you have your new firmware. Hmm. That's pretty sick, right? That's yeah. pretty sick. Yeah. Do you know what I always uh, think is cool about our keyboards? If you compare it to some of these more enthusiastic mechanical keyboards. Is let's say you want to flash the firmware, you need to put somewhere a pin, somewhere in a PCB, and uh, then plug it in again and do crazy stuff, and then it flashes, and then you know it's it's done. And with us, it's like bloop, 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 bloop. Yes. that's uh, yeah, that's cool. The update is that what it's called? That that that, that sounds like uh, like it could be. What? It'd be updates. A, B, A, B updates. Technical terms. It's, yeah, it sounds like this. A minimal down. A, B testing is different. It helps you during firmware development. I mean, it's not even about like faster update timing because the, the update time will be, if you just see this one process, it will be longer. But the key advantage is that, yeah, of course, like it's, it's not gonna, everybody uh, is updating their, 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 their keyboard firmware every day. Um, but then a big advantage is that, um, right now the firmware update is a little scary, I think. Uh, so I maybe think about, uh, earlier, earlier this week, I read on discord, like, Hey, um, I, uh, I, I started the firmware update and the bar was like, uh, almost at the end and, uh, I was too afraid to, uh, and the keyboard didn't turn on and I was too afraid to replug and I waited for 20 minutes until I replugged the keyboard and then it was working fine again. And, um, I'm not sure like how much this happens, but I, I, I do know that update process is very like, um, sensitive, let's say. And so what I hope will happen if we do this, uh, AB uh, update, that we are able to control the, the accuracy is accuracy or the process a lot more and um so that it becomes like a lot uh, smoother and also like uh let's say um yeah a lot uh, we're able to check everything a lot better and then so it will also be much more reliable and i think that is a big advantage 
because uh, right now you need to like wait and your keyboard like turns off and on and uh, and uh, yeah. how I kind of feel like it at least when I have a device and, and I need to update it it's like oh I keep my fingers crossed and hope it uh, <laughs> hope it turns on again so that is uh, it's oh, uh, easy restore is also a, a good one yeah it's interesting how you uh, how you mentioned this because it, it happened to me like a while ago someone doing a beta period where I wanted to update the firmware and then also in the last bit, it just didn't update it any further. And my lights were on, I was like, okay, unplug, replug, it works. You know, I, I, I really didn't care because uh, I think even though if it if the firmware updates doesn't work or it stops somewhere halfway, I mean, you can always go into restore mode and that fixes That's like true. all the problems. And I've never, I've yeah. done it many times and my keyboard has never been bricked or any key, any Woody keyboard I used. And I don't think we have had any case where it ever got software bricked, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned because I don't think, uh, I've never seen it myself either, but there is like, uh, uh this week there was somebody on discord that couldn't get, uh, so they could still get into the restore mode in their bootloader, but they couldn't update the firmware anymore. So I'm not really sure if that is, it, it's kind of bricking, but then not really like, um, yeah, not like completely broken at least. Even in the past, when I had like the very first beta period of the Wooting one, there uh, I remember when people uh, the beta testers finally got it at their homes, and then it also went to crap with the uh, uh, with the updating of the firmware, and that's why we introduced you know the uh, restore mode. But uh, even those keyboards weren't bricked in the end, right? So, oh, I mean the the restore mode has been. Has proved to be very reliable uh, but it's also like because it is in the end uh if you look at the implementation it's just like a completely like separate part of the flash memory that is impossible to change hmm. uh from the outside let's say and that just makes it very reliable because you can always kind of go back to it no matter what you do no matter what you do with your settings or no matter what you do with firmware updating as long as you don't like um have some sort of special tool you, you cannot change it and and that is that is a great thing uh but then then still uh i think so we have this trust in the restore mode let's say but i assume that everybody does uh no you you don't have that um uh automatically so i think uh, no 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 for, for certain so let's say you update a camera for example uh uh, it was always like, oh, you go to the website, download the, the weird little file, whatever the name is, and then it says like yeah. big fat letters there. Oh, be cautious, firmware update, uh, don't yeah, remove yeah, USB don't, because don't else the world will die and your product yeah, will explode. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, okay, USB in there, and then it's updating, and you know, you're looking at it, and it's going, it's going really slow. You see it on your camera yeah. itself, and it's, and it's like, like, oh, oh who, yeah. and you're sweating, and then, oh, firmware update filled. Oh, no, it's filled. And then, oh, you're plugging it, and then the old firmware is still there, you know, because the, the most yeah. products won't break on the firmware update, but they always also make it so scary that firmware updates are yeah, scary yeah, yeah, yeah. And be taken serious. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and that's, that's because by, by nature it is a it is like a sensitive operation but so, and so if we can make that better i think that's a huge improvement yeah if it's not a sd card it yeah, does true. i mean then it's just a, yeah. i got just got my wooden one unstuck i was unable to use the function layer yeah i i guess that was related to the latest uh remap update but then yeah i mean anytime Let's say there is an issue. Uh, usually, restore fixes it. That's a, a little piece of. Uh, this magic. one is actually very interesting. Cross says, could the lacquer have restored by, for example, holding the mode key for ten seconds without utility, so without an internet connection? That's also nice if you have like a very steady firmware version. There's sort of a backup, like if everything fails, you don't have any internet, and you want to fix this because now you need internet, right, to uh, uh, restore a keyboard. And the utility, yeah. uh, but yeah. having an option inside your keyboard that resets to a safe firmware that's it's not even a dumb idea with all this memory you own so much memory. All this memory, yeah. I mean, it's still not infinite, of course, because the firmware is like big enough to at least like take up a sizable chunk. But it, it, in theory, that's possible. Yeah, I think it's definitely something we should explore. But can a keyboard yeah. restore itself? So does it also need computing power from a PC, or can a keyboard? actually do it all by itself 
it, it should be able to restore it by itself. But then I do think uh, if you want to fix a broken keyboard, you would need to like replug and press the button or something like that. Uh, if you want to repair like a keyboard running, I, I, I think you can just, you should be able to do that just by holding a, holding a key. Uh, but then it does need to have like some sort of like a LTS, uh, some sort of like a, a stable version already on there. Yeah. But then we do need to also have some sort of like default settings and stuff like that. But then, yeah, could work. Is it possible to tamper with the calibration data? Uh, no, but then the which one and two they don't have like a per key calibration. Should we have something for the leg condition that can calibrate? Because it's also difficult for use to calibrate keys. To be honest, uh, you can only the only thing that you can actually calibrate is like the top position and the bottom position because nobody can hold precise a switch yes. at a certain point. So it's also a very low key version of calibration instead of what you can do in a factory with a uh, machine, for example. Yeah. So yeah, to give some more context with the, with the flight deck switches, because at the start of the press, the light is blocked. Um, so that means that of course you can still make it better with calibration, but if you don't use calibration, it's not like, uh, it, it won't be really bad or something because at the start there will just be no light and your value is zero always let's say um so you always have like a at least like a reliable let's say you, you always have at least some reliability in your output but then with the with the electric switch that's not the case because you're at the start we don't block our magnet it's not even possible to block the magnet um so there will always be some signal with some variation because your magnet has like 10% uh, tolerance, your sensor has some tolerance. So that, so there will always be like some variation in your, uh, in, in the electric switch, in, in between the electric switches. So what that means is that for, of course you can still get away without like calibration where you just say, oh, I, I will only start reading values from a certain range, like a safe range. But that is not very nice because uh, then you, you can definitely, uh, you're definitely gonna start noticing differences in between the keys. But then, what is nice about uh, the liquor suits and, and, and magnets and whole sensor combination in general is that if you have a start and an end value, you can make a reasonable estimation of how your curve looks in between. Um, because it will, it will move in relatively the same way every time. Let's just call it that. Um, so that means that if you want to calibrate, you don't necessarily need to accurately press a key a certain distance and have all these data points in between. If you just have a start point and an end point, you can make a very good assumption. You can make a very good interpolation. So that is something that, so that is also what we're going to do. Um, we haven't figured out exact technical details yet, but what I probably think is going to look like is in the factory, we'll have, uh, we'll measure a start and end point for every single key. And then, um, we're, we're not really, and I think what we'll, we'll do is that uh, once you swap a key, we'll have some way to like detect if a key is swapped, or if a key value is different, and then you can recalibrate that key. Meaning you, uh, it will again measure start value, and then you sh you should press it all the way, and then you measure end value, and that's how you have a calibration. Yeah. That is kind of the process I've been thinking about. It's also nice if a user can recalibrate every key on a keyboard. I mean, it's, it's kind of a job, but it should be a... Yeah, uh, I think so, yeah. Uh, ideally, you would want it to be like as smooth as possible, but then uh, maybe it also like provides some sort, sort of more like a feeling of control where you feel like, oh, I, it doesn't really feel that right. I can, I can just recalibrate if I want. Yeah, it's, it's also a nice feeling for end users too. Yeah. Uh, Rosica says you could calibrate by pressing the key down multiple times to read the average curve. That's true. Uh, the only issue I'll have is that can you read fast enough to get like enough data points in one press uh, to have like a to have like an accurate representation? Um, and also, like uh, you, you still don't really know if 
the user presses it all the way incorrectly, let's say, because you don't really know like how the user is pressing, but you can like make a good estimation. Uh, Goss asks, any idea to open up RGB calibration to the utility? Different keycaps have different effects on color accuracy. And then you look at it, it is a similar question. Is the white color better on the Lecker edition? So we haven't changed anything yet about the RGB calibration or RGB, let's say, uh, uh, yeah, this is called RGB calibration. Mm, so uh, I would say it's the same. Uh, it's, it's not better for, for any specific reason. Um, it, it, it might be a good idea to do some sort of RGB calibration. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it could just be simple as uh, just having some factors per color. But then, if you have, if you say different keycaps have different effects on color accuracy, do you mean like, like on a keyboard, like different keycaps of the same set, or like different keycap sets? That will, uh, I, 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 I sure. A keycap will definitely influence the light, right? The, the things that shine through, like if you have a thicker keycap, less light, light shines through. And it also depending on the material, what's inside the keycap, how light reacts to it. So it really depends on the set if you really look at a keycap basis, how it can yeah. differentiate. Like different sets, like not all the keycaps from a single set, but yeah. So for example, for the Lecker edition, uh, let's say it would make all your keys blue then it will probably look different under the yellow keys and your Whiffany keys and your white keys. The light that right. actually shines through. So there, there's like a difference in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's nice. True. So it's nice if you have like a leg condition, then I can like tweak it and figure out the best mm. color scheme. So it looks really nice and then share it on the profiles at Wooting.io and uh, everybody can download it and everybody's yeah. happy. It's like, whoa, sick Eric, sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I guess it's also like when you have like have like a, let's say a certain uh, uh, profile, profile, color profile. Then it's like okay, if I load this on my Wooting one, and if I load this on my uh, Lecker edition, it will, it will, it will look the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, you call it color color. You would. It's it's. You have like this weirdest yeah, lag like ever. It's like sometimes you say okay. words twice and then... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so it's... I can... <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me, uh, let me switch them all up. True, because this isn't pro stream, you know? This isn't pro stream, man. Uh, this is not pro stream. Um... Three seconds. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh... Oh. Is he back? I think he's back. Hello, Jeroen. All right, let's see. Okay. Where do I put this? Oh, I need to is change the whole streaming setup now. Thanks, Jeroen. How is this? Is this good? It's uh, it's better for sure. Okay. Oh, let's see. Ding, 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 ding. Oh. Let's make Jeroen a little bit bigger. Here we go. Here we go. Pro stream. Pro stream. Um, pro stream. I was thinking about the rapid trigger, right? Uh, yeah. Will rapid trigger be on a Wooting 1 and Wooting 2? Uh, not sure yet. I think uh, I think we could, but maybe in a more like... Um, uh, how to say? Simple way. Yeah, like a simple way, or because I, 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 it will be less accurate. That's for sure. But budget trigger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could. It, it will be less accurate. Well, the thing uh, is, so, it's, mm -hmm. there's one thing I'm. Uh, I really hate. It's like, hey, there's a new product, like a new iPhone, and old software doesn't work on the, you know, the the, the older iPhones, uh, for example. And the same goes for uh, our keyboards, in my opinion. I. It would be <gasps> terrible if, like, a Rapid Trigger works on a Lecker edition, but not on a uh, Wooting One, for example. Uh, yeah. In my opinion, it really sucks because it's also a cool feature that would add to the Wooting One. But at one point, there's just a uh, hardware limitation that the keyboard cannot handle it, and I think that's also yeah. where we should draw the line. Like, if it's not feasible with the hardware, then it's just like we did our best, but it's not working anymore. 
but yeah. you would never do a software lock based on version, right? It's like, oh, well, you yeah. have to buy the newest version. <laughs> yeah, it's really lame where it's like, okay, if, if fundamentally it works, but you could just kind of like uh, make this, uh, this software limitation. It's like, oh, no, uh, you have to buy this new version to, uh, to use this new feature. F feature! Feature. 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 That feature. Future. Fe feature. Feature. Uh, so that is, um, yeah, that'll be really lame. Uh, uh, we'll definitely look at it because um, uh, it, I don't think it will perform the same way as in um, as in the Lecker edition. But then uh, we uh, we we we'll try to add it in some way. Maybe more like with a uh, with a uh, uh, let's say uh, li uh, like bigger zones or something like that. So it's pretty cool. New, new stuff coming to the utility for the like edition. Uh, uh, yeah, putting the final touches in for the mass production and talking about final touches. There's also like the whole uh, packaging, right, of the lacquer edition. Yeah. So the actual well, sorry, the actual box packaging has been done for how it works and how it looks has been on for quite a while and i think the funny thing is one of the first thing about the leg edition was the packaging and we didn't actually know how it would look but well but we knew why we wanted it how to function how you open it how to interact with it and uh in the end given kevin picked it up made it better and uh, uh, we based some graphics over it and it's really uh, really nice packaging uh but yeah it also takes a lot of time to make these uh, uh to just make packaging in general and everything that uh uh, comes to it like all the little details that people maybe not realize that also has to be done right so uh, yeah uh, uh, it's a uh, it's, it's a small thing so like the stick underneath your keyboard uh, that's also something that has been made right if somebody needs to design it uh, uh, needs to be a certain quality needs to be tested needs to be checked out based on the keyboard and needs to do stuff and now there's like a funny thing where we're at like even the little details on the sticker there's like this fcc logo on there as well and uh i think i used the official fcc logo also for the leg edition but we got like reply from the factory it's like hey that's not the good fcc logo even though it's from the official website and we mentioned that to them and now they're sort of figuring out like hey what is the correct fcc logo and it's really funny how these tiny little details uh even matter on your keyboard right because nobody's nobody in the world is going to care if you use the correct FCC logo, if you even have the FCC logo on there. Yeah. Nobody cares, really. Uh, hey, are they going to say it's like a new, uh, new logo or something, or they change it? No, no, just, the factory just has a wrong logo, in my opinion. It has <laughs> nothing to do with FCC. It's, uh, even though it's like a minor change, it's like the, the FCC logo has like a uh, uh, angled cutoff of the F, uh, and the one day supply was like straight and mm. you know it's not legit <laughs> but all these things you know you need to take care of it and needs to be designed and also the uh, labels on the master boxes master box needs to be designed uh, the labels on the keyboard uh, the things that you put mm. inside the packaging uh, and uh, yeah, yeah yeah it's also cool like the thing what uh, i think what sort of got slipped away the past couple of weeks was the packaging of the keycap set so for the uh, ISO keyboards, there's like an extra uh, keycap set. If you have like German, uh, UK or Nordic or whatever, so you can swap out some keys to make it your correct language. And these are also yeah. separate pack packaged. And we needed to make some uh, graphics for those packaging. And that's also done. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I like it. I'm a really big fan of the whole lack of packaging in general. And I cannot wait to, you know, play with it, open it, try it out and see what the reactions are. Because I think it's also a very big part of the experience, right? You anticipated this keyboard for already a year, it's finally arrived, and then it comes with like neat packaging, the unboxing experience is pretty cool, and then you plug in your keyboard and everything should work slow, smoothly, and then you throw away the packaging and nobody cares anymore, but still, it's it's all part of the experience. Uh, yeah, I think especially with this one, because the, the packaging is also, we made also unique for the Lekker like Edition. Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah. I think but, if this... uh, uh, thinking about it, I, I don't even know what the, what the product is going to look like because I have seen like, let's say designs or a sample like uh, fractured fractured things uh, mm -hmm. along the way, but I, I wouldn't know uh, how uh, what the final result is like when it comes to unboxing and design. I have no idea. Yeah. So that's that will also be a nice surprise. True. 
but Kevin made some nice renders a while back of the packaging. Oh, so, really? that, so that gives a very clear uh, indication how it looks. Uh, but we won't share any of those, right? Like, we'll be uh, surprised. No, uh, it, it's cooler to have, you know, we shouldn't I spoil so. everything. Uh, something yeah. should be like a nice, uh, a nice first yeah. experience. Yeah, and like the, the most important thing that everybody's wondering as well is will there be a postcard in the box? Uh, that's a big question. That's the that big question. Big, uh, that is a big question. Who knows? Who knows? Well, I know. Maybe it will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I know the answer to that question. <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, we'll it, see. It's nice. It's, it's always like if we remind people that there is a postcard, sometimes people send the postcard. Last we had uh, even a postcard over email. He wrote his request down or his request and scanned it yeah. and sent it to us. That's pretty uh, pretty interesting. Mm. It's also like a hack because then you can use it in limited times. That's true. <laughs> you just change the color, change the text at any moment. So I've got all the yeah. postcards we've received. I've got them on the board there and in total there are like six or so or eight. That's yeah. pretty, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, the interesting thing with the postcards is that it took a very long time for the first one to arrive. But after that one did, then it happened more often. Yeah. But I, I would have expected that, especially at the start, that there would be more. Yeah, but it, 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 like this is a good uh, a good thing. Like Nisa, Nisa is still running, wondering what to do with my postcard. It's like a special item in a video game, right? So you have like yeah, this, exactly. this, this sick grenade and you can use it on this boss. Or you can save yeah. it until you find like a bigger or more severe enemy and then at some point you finish the game it's like oh okay i still have the grenade because i was too scared to use it and i think <laughs> yeah, it's, the exactly. same, it's the same for the postcard so. right it's also yeah. like a memorable a memorable thing uh yeah. memory yeah, memorable yeah 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 so it's uh it's like a trophy sort of thing shall we use it shall we not use it uh, yeah but the cool thing is you can also give them to your grandchildren, right? And then in 60 years, send them and try it out. Uh, it could be a family uh, relic and you send it to... Uh... <laughs> is, is there an address on the postcard or...? or... No. no. Oh, okay, okay. I think you look it up on the website or better yet, uh, send us an email with the current Yeah, because I was just thinking if there's like your address listed and you moved to Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> All the wishes go to the point. Now we should update the, yeah. uh, the address, address on the website yeah. before yeah, yeah. we leave it. Uh, Okay. Uh, just some questions. There are some good questions. Are you like already uh, lining them up? Uh, I'm gonna do it now. That there's this question that's been in the queue for a long time from Nanocard. Snack bag will still be delivered at the same time as the keyboards, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, I mean, like, I haven't heard any changes about it. Uh, I'm not too involved in the snack bag process, but then, uh, as far as I know, that will just uh, that will just uh, stay the same. So staying, uh, no, not sooner. No, definitely not sooner. It will just all be one, part of one big box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, from Nanocard. Nanocard is like on a roll today. Uh, what other yeah. non-keyboard things are you releasing soon? Soon, Nothing well, we have the os we have the OS device we're working on, of course. But yeah, that's, uh, that's but that that is also keyboard. a keyboard device. Yeah. But we don't have like anything like we are exploring a few things, but we don't have anything like uh, in let's say active development. Well, there's that, nothing like past exploration phase. At the moment. It's one thing that was sort of exploring wrist stress related, but it's. Uh... It's an exploration. I think we're also oh. to do a stream uh, different colors. Right? Oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah different so colors. Different we're colors figuring out, yeah. So we're experimenting with different colors uh, for the wrist yeah. press and even different color patterns on the wrist press uh, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, they are taking uh, taking inspiration from Dragon Dildo. So that's uh, all I've seen from that. <laughs> that's so good. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> they actually have a great, great silicone, uh, silicone manufacturing, but uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but no, we're not really working on any act. No, no, there, there are things in the pipeline. Mouse pads. Not yeah, mouse pads is uh, is uh, uh, in, let's say an exploration phase. We haven't like um, 
So, so we're, we're looking at different products or a specific color color house. Um, but we haven't like really found the right, let's say, the right way to do it yet. It, it's, it's similar to the business where for years we kind of like explore to to have like the right what we feel like is the right way until we settled on this let's say solid silicone idea and I was like okay this is what we need to go for and then we made it and and with the mouse pads it's the same where we we tried like different things but we don't really feel confident in something where we feel like oh this is something that is like uh, something we really want to do so uh, it's very easy to make a mouse pad you can just be like uh like uh what's the guy uh, I don't know. There, there's a lot of like mousepad companies now that just like do OEM stuff, and that is something we could do. It just doesn't really feel like the right thing to do. It's it's so funny. For now. That there are so many easy products we can make OEM styles, and even some really cool killer products. But still, uh, we we always want to take the 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 better, well the the high route, so to say, and try to make it our own and give our own spin on it. And you know, I agree. Some OEM stuff is cool, some OEM stuff sucks, and it's not all bad, but sometimes you would just want to go the extra mile and try to just get a little bit more out of it, because what would be even the point for us selling an OEM mouse pad when you can yeah, buy them off fun. Amazon from the same thing with a different logo on them for $10 cheaper, you know, that's... I uh, agree. Yeah, yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Okay, uh, from Godstream, uh, any reason caps lock, scroll lock, and num lock are eliminated? Mm. Illuminated? Illuminated now? When using the RGB SDK, it used to be not eliminated. Yeah, that's a bug. We we already have a we already have a fix. We're gonna uh, we're gonna do a patch release of the firmware uh, with the remapping uh, today or start of next week. And that will include the fix for this. Uh, yeah, it will go back to how it was before. How many types of routing postcards exist? I want to collect them all. At the moment, there are only two versions. There's like one we used for the early batches of the Wooting one. And then there's a newer version that we used for the newer versions of the Wooting one and the Wooting two. Wait, there are two different versions? Are you no, 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 no. no well, 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 for the Wooting one, at some point we updated the packaging. And that was also the point when we included the new postcard. So there's like oh. a postcard that only has been sent out during the kickstart oh. of the Wooting one. And I think during the first two batches. Yeah, so do you, have a, do you have an example there? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, you show, can you show the difference? Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Will there be a man of so color in the box? collection fell on the ground. That's too bad. So oh. this is the original one. Original postcard. I cannot show the back because it all has yes, sensitive it all have sensitive text on the back. So this is the the original one. And then there is this updated one. I'm waiting uh, for my stream to update. Yes, I can imagine. So the top is the old one, and the bottom is the updated one. There's, and there's quite a long, a long delay on our stream, you know? The, I don't know. Could be. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I see it. And I think for the second one, the thing that annoyed me the most is on the first postcard, like all the pictures from the three of us, like you and I, we were both. I don't know, turn the other way around and it has like these crappy pictures on them and the background wasn't really that popping, but the second one is kind of nice so it all fits and blends it together well and it's funny because the picture of you uh, is actually the same frame as Carla is because I was doing a live stream when we announced the RGB effects or something. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good picture. Oh yeah, now I see it. So it's basically, uh, yeah. you just like split it and... Uh... yeah. Cropped it, yeah. rotated it, and that's pretty, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, that was a very good live stream. I remember that one. Yeah, and maybe the Lack Edition will have a uh, unique postcard as well. Unique postcard. Maybe. Only a, m maybe there will only be a thousand made of those postcards, but who knows. Oh, uh, oh, oh b before we go into the whole question thing, there's like one more thing. Uh, I think that's something Carla will uh, talk about more in a future update pretty soon. Oh, yeah. But, um, Beginning this week, we made the decision to not go to China during the mass or trial production to oversee the factory. And uh, it has multiple reasons, but the biggest is, of course, the whole uh, uh, COVID-19 virus spreading over the world. And it's yeah. difficult to go into China because you need to go there, uh, get your visa, uh, be, in be in quarantine, and then 
visit the factory and if you want to leave the country again then you need to be in quarantine again so it takes a lot of time to do it and it's not really worth it and there are some other uh, ongoing things in uh, uh, in China we just want to avoid it's not worth the risk so now the first question is like hey how do you guys uh, uh, make sure the quality is up to standard and the factory doesn't cheat you out right and yep. for that Jeroen we have a solution yeah we do am I taking it now or what is this we build an android and Jeroen can control it with VR uh... <laughs> <laughs> peep pop, peep pop. No, way. no but you, that'll be sick we bought like the spot uh, spot robot from uh, boston dynamics <laughs> and it will walk around the factory uh at, at manufacturing time um, yeah yeah uh no but the thing is there's like this uh, can i name the company name of it i could write i think it. so yeah yeah so there's this company called vtrust and they're specialized in audits and overseeing uh manufacturing quality processes, control. quality control. And yeah. uh, so we're gonna use that company and they will be our eyes and ears in the factory and they will make sure everything is up to standard and they will you know, do some little yep. tests and trials and uh, yeah, make sure the quality is up to standard. Uh, because yeah, that's, so, yeah. that's very important for us. Yeah, we started using them um, for the wrist dress production mm -hmm. because uh, we know like it's one of those things that we want to keep control over, but we don't want to go there every time because for the uh, keyword production, we went there many times for the actual productions themselves to oversee it ourselves. But for the wrist test, the, uh, we wanted to try like using an external partner. And we've been very happy with this one because it's so cool because uh, they will go there and they will do like a, a range of checks you will uh, instruct them to do. And they will write these reports and the reports are very extensive. <laughs> yes. So you get this massive PDFs with like a, with a lot of photos and they do like a, uh, uh, they drop boxes, they check the packaging, they do like a function check. Uh, they do they, they pretty much do everything you want. And my favorite part is that at the end, there's always this photo where they have like uh, them at the factory with like the factory owner or something like that. <laughs> it's always <laughs> super awkward. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice, to kind of yeah. prove that, they, uh, that they've been there. And it's, uh, it's a great way to keep like an overview. Uh, from the side and they, they, they're very professional which I really like okay this, this is a picture I'm going to share it's like a really s little small snippet of the report but this makes me laugh every time oh yeah that's great it's the function check <laughs> of the wrist rest <laughs> <laughs> it's so good <laughs> so at least we know that the wrist rests are really good because somebody checked yeah. it on the function you're rest. able to put your wrist on the rest nice check yes Ding. pass pass <laughs> so if they go into this step you know you know that they, they're doing a good job uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost a meme uh. <laughs> this one is so good yeah, wow. yeah and uh, uh yeah this is something we wanted to share <laughs> and uh, uh Carla will have a uh, more in-depth update about this whole topic uh uh, yeah. in the near future uh, before the trial production probably here uh. yeah yeah there's also something uh i think something else that was like a, a, at least for, for us it felt like an important decision is that um oh wait should we talk about the like the numbering stuff we we, we won't talk about the other detail but at least the numbers okay right yeah okay, okay. so uh so we talked a lot about serial numbers uh, this week and what to stick on the bottom of the keyboard and uh of course because uh we'll produce a thought well we are there are a thousand people that have pre-ordered the lecker edition but then the issue is we're not going to produce exactly 1000 uh because we'll have like uh, some extra some coming from uh, uh maybe the trial production that are really good all that kind of stuff and we also need to have some sort of leftover and maybe there's like quality issues in between and the issue we we were kind of thinking a lot about is um, with the serial numbers is that we're not able to guarantee that we'll have like exact serial numbering between one and one thousand. That is or one and yeah one and one thousand. That is really really hard or zero and ninety nine nine. Yeah. And what we uh, yeah we're, we're kind of like uh, what we decided to do is that the serial number mm -hmm. will run a little bit over one thousand. So it will probably be like uh, 0 to 1100 or 0 to 1200 kind of depending on what happens with the trial production so we can have like a, a consistent numbering 
So the the, the, the funny so, thing is we, we, we need to produce more than a thousand, right? Because we need some keyboards uh, for spare parts. And uh, if a keyboard is broken uh, within two years, whatever we know, we, we need to send out a new one. Uh, because, yeah. you know, uh, that's just uh, how it works. And that's what we do. So we need to produce uh, a little bit over a thousand. Uh, and another thing that can happen in uh, mass production, it's like, oh, somebody puts a sticker on a keyboard and uh, it sort of gets crooked or whatever. And it's like, oh, this sucks. Let's tear off the sticker and put the next sticker on there. And then you lose yeah. a precious serial number, right? And yeah, it could yeah. be like number 500. So some serial numbers in the whole range of the zero to 1000 will get lost during mass production. And that's why you need to uh, have more serial numbers ready. And uh, just a little warning that uh, if you get a serial number that's like, I don't know, uh, uh, 1150 or something you shouldn't be scared that we made like 1150 keyboards uh, we yeah. made a little bit over a thousand and uh, uh, it's probably because of mass production fills that uh, uh, yeah the number is yeah over. It, yeah it was just uh really hard to have like exact numbering that was uh that was the issue uh but we will have something a little surprise to make up for it but we're not going to share about that one yet <laughs> the forbidden serial numbers, yeah. Yes. Did you room push this key insert all the way up? You told, yes, exactly. And okay. I also like uh, have my camera below now so I can look down on uh, I'm also on not, I'm also not sitting, so let's say I would sit straight and I can even bump my chair up higher. Oh, let's go. Higher, higher. So, uh, uh, okay. This is better, right? You could also just move me down. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> So we'd be worried if we see serial number 2000, yes. <laughs> That's something yeah. fishy going on. Eh? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I think like best case, best case is like, um, yeah, I think it will be like 11, yeah, 1100, something like that. I hope it won't be too much because then the, the chance that, well, yeah. I hope it won't be too much, but I, I, I think it will, it will be something along 1100 or so. You can see the same thing with the uh, Wooty 2 production, right? Even if you only produce a thousand, you can have serial numbers up to 1200 doing a single batch. Uh, but that's yeah. uh, not really a, that of an issue because you're not buying a limited run, you know? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, in this case, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a shame because it is like the number is an important thing, but then uh, we, we're still going to give it a little twist to make it unique. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But it's also a surprise because else people are going to complain about it and uh, we just want to push our, our way through it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back to uh, to the questions. Uh, uh, okay. Let's do this. Will there be a man of rooting calendar in the box? Not in this version. I still... I don't know where this idea originally came from, but I think it has been going on for years about a nude calendar or just a sexy calendar. And I think at yeah. some point we should actually just make a calendar with keyboards. Can you imagine like standing naked there with a key? <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's, uh, I think it's funny. Uh, maybe one day. It is there. pretty funny. It is pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, okay. Those are all the questions. We're done. It was a nice right. stream. Thanks everybody for watching. <laughs> No, uh, are there any more no, questions? I think we, yeah, I think we at least covered all the topics, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see what to do with it, packaging label. We won't go to China. Why? How do you insert quality? Yeah, another thing with the won't go to China is that, or at least what, well, first of all, I, I really want to go to the factory, of course. Uh, but secondly, uh, we were not able to make the flogs. And that, that is something I'm pretty bummed out about. To make it? Flogs. Factory Flux. production oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was always, at least like for me, a highlight to follow and to and to create and to see uh, and to have this. Uh, let's say the, it was just a, a beautiful way to to bring people along. That's what I always felt like with the vlogs, uh, because it was like more we couldn't uh, outside of from directly live streaming in the factory, we we couldn't get more closer to people than this. No happy Jeroen. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, it's very sad uh very bummed out about that one so we're still like thinking about what to do when it comes to uh let's say this uh, video uh gap i think we're just going to make videos of ourselves along the way like uh share 
I, I don't really know what to do yet. Um, I mean, uh, of course, that uh, there won't be like these in-depth blogs that we made in the past running through the factory, but there will be like uh, video <laughs> updates to doing the mass production. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, 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 we will just see what kind of information we can uh, we can share because I think during the last uh, video you and I made about utility, we sort of saw again how cool it is actually to make a video, and uh, it's it's I think it's cooler than reading a blog at least, you know, having a video yeah. there. So it's, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, in the, future. Future. the remap uh, uh, video that was quite nice. I think we'll do more of those. Yeah, we should do more in the future. <laughs> Good one, Eric. Uh, yeah, vlogs did give a very personal feeling for making them. Yeah, definitely. But maybe I think from... can make vlogs for us, right? Hello, yeah, yeah, well, hello. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. But um, yeah. Yeah, I, I was also thinking like maybe there's like a, a Chinese uh, Chinese YouTubers that can make like that. We, we actually had like a Chinese YouTuber come along to a factory trip before, but they made like vlogs in Chinese. So it's not also uh, not that useful. So we'll need like a, a Chinese YouTuber that also speaks English very well and it's like a good quality and everything. I like that idea, you you know that? Really? Shouldn't it be difficult? To, I mean, uh, is Fiverr active in China or do they have something else here? Yeah, well, I mean, there are like a, a lot of Chinese YouTubers. Well, they're not YouTubers because YouTube is blocked. Yeah, yeah. But there are like uh, uh, people that produce vlogs for like uh, what is a uh, Billy Billy and uh, which I don't know what they use uh, for video. Yeah. yeah, maybe we should hire someone and make a vlog. Make a video. Yeah, make the video everything and add a voice. <gasps> That's a good idea. Oh, we need, a, this is it, right? We need to have a cosplayer, somebody who can dress up as Calder. And then just do the vlog there at a factory. That's so smart. Nobody will notice oh. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will do like the same like uh, color transitions and that kind of stuff. Like, hi guys, welcome to the factory. <laughs> I don't know what color that. You can like walk around and uh, I don't know. yeah, but you know, color is pretty good at uh, the vlogging stuff as well. Like you yeah. can make a very nice uh, video. Get a girl, female color, color voice over here. Yeah. But I think having them like uh, create some uh, videos, but you know, if they make the videos, it's like, I don't know, but it'll probably be crappy video. That's a, that's a, that's an issue. I mean, if somebody can, yeah, we'll, uh, we will figure it yeah. out when we get there. Yeah. Uh... yeah. Yeah. speaks both English and Chinese. And yeah, but, 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 she's in but Taiwan. people from Taiwan, yeah, exactly. They would also rather not fly from Taiwan to China at the moment. No, because in a case where Yanni can go, Kalle can go as well, right? So it... <laughs> yes, that's true. It doesn't make that much sense for yeah. send Yanni there. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah and, and when it comes to them making videos, of course, we can, we can get videos, but then I can already imagine, I guess, trying to make something out of it and it would just feel so crappy. But uh, yeah, we, we could at least try the, to get some uh, some footage out of it. I think if you have like an idea how the factory looks from the inside and how the lines are set up, you know, you can instruct somebody very clear, oh, we need footage from this, this angle, this, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, we've never seen it there in a mass production environment, so it's also difficult to instruct someone, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, well. We'll, uh, we'll figure out when we get there. Yeah. We'll figure it out, but we're definitely going to make content uh, when it's like a time of tower production because we do need to, I feel like we really want to have like the same, at least like try to have some sort of like a, uh, some sort of story you can follow along with, with what it's like with the vlogs where you can just like live follow like what is going on in the factory. Yeah, death vlogs, yeah, something like that. Okay. Well. I think you need to end stream here because uh, there's a lot more to do today. Day has yeah, I'm ended. really tired. Okay, great. Well, thanks everybody for uh, for watching. Mm. Gave us some nice uh, inspiration for some cool utility things. Um, yeah. And yeah, well, I don't know. Oh, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. This, this is a good question. Where do we want to have Uh It's... Uh, uh, it's a matter of firmware implementation. So we uh, uh, we implemented the firmware 
uh, in a way that will make it very difficult to have more than one. That's uh, that's what it kind of boils down to. Um, I, I think we'll we'll fix it in the future. But uh, yeah, I said it right. I think we'll fix it in the future. <laughs> but then, uh, um, yeah, to make, to change it was just uh, too um, too impactful on the design of the of the, how we handle the keys. So it wasn't really worth it. I feel like at the moment, uh, maybe uh, later. Cool. That's it. As Trina as before did it. How how early do you eat? Depends uh, on where you live, right? No, it's crossy as it is in Holland, so same oh. time zone. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, same as me, like my parents, like traditional farmer time. Uh, five PM. Five PM dinner time. Five PM. That's when I start breakfast, uh, okay. Uh what seven forty five? That's early. Oh, that's pretty uh, pretty early. Yeah. yeah. All right. I guess that's, that's it. That's it. Uh, okay, great. That's it. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Have a great everybody weekend. for watching. See you guys in uh, Eric, uh, two weeks. Eric and Jeroen, pro stream. Pro stream. It was a pleasure. Can't wait for the next one. Bye-bye. Uh. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.